UBS shares soar after profit surge in the first quarter. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Ramzan Karamali. Swiss banking giant UBS announced its first quarterly profit since taking over Credit Suisse. The 1.8 billion euros in net profit far exceeded expectations. So are these types of results likely to become a regular occurrence for UBS? Or will the benefits of swallowing up its rivals start to diminish? Well, to help answer that and more, I'm joined by Kathleen Brooks, Research Director at XDB. Kathleen, thanks so much for joining us. So the market certainly seemed impressed by UBS's Q1 performance. Are you? Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. Up 10%, the best performance in a year. I think there were some really strong elements, uh, obviously, as one would expect in wealth management, you would certainly expect to see that. They also have made really good strides towards cost reductions. So $1 billion of cost reductions through the merger with Credit Suisse in the first quarter. That is very, very good progress and suggests that the CEO's strategic plan is actually working and they're making big steps towards that. One part, part of it, which they did mention, which maybe the market isn't concentrating on too much, is that the CEO did sound a little bit worried about rates being cut in Europe and elsewhere in the coming future, in the coming months, and that potentially impacting net interest income. So what they expect to earn from loans going forward is likely to be less than what they have already. So that could hurt some results. But overall, fantastic for wealth management, a big push into North America, which also did really well. And that's such a key market for these banks that I think over Overall, it's certainly on a good footing for the rest of the year. Now, one area that UBS has certainly benefited from is uh, having Credit Suisse under it now. Uh, will the positive impact of having Credit Suisse as part of UBS start to diminish going forward, though? Well, I mean, you would expect that, right? And, and it's going to have a base effect for sure. Um, but the idea is that by putting them both together, now, yes, UBS was in some ways forced to buy Credit Suisse, but by pushing them together, that, that they've become bigger than a whole. So actually looking forward with credit, with um, the residual Credit Suisse, be that the, the um, personnel that they've got, with the clients that they've got as well, and that they've acquired through this, um, the, through this buy, this purchase of Credit Suisse, that that should continue to, impact the business and have a positive impact for the long term. But I think we've also got to look at the um, cost savings. So cost savings have been very big in the first quarter. We don't ex expect that to continue. So whether or not credits, the impact of Credit Suisse on UBS continues to be results is all going to be, go, be dependent on the growth and the biz new business that it generates. So far, that's been good. We are looking at potentially a better environment because we are seeing lower interest rates down the, in, the, in the future. That could be positive, but we will need to wait and see this. So there still are quite a few unknowns. Now, BP also had results out today. And unsurprisingly, I guess, um, profits didn't quite hit the mark with oil and gas prices falling. But it's still keeping its pace of its share buyback scheme and has promised big cost savings. What did you make of the overall results today? Well, I'm, I kind of expected, I think the market expected more because we had seen that real boost to the oil price in the first quarter. Now, that didn't really materialize or show up in any material way. They missed on pretty much every line. And I think the worrying part was the increase in debt and the increase in capital spending, which will reduce cash flow down the line. So that could impact the business if there are you know, unexpected circumstances to arise which has been known to happen for BP um overall though it was fairly solid they are you know they threw in the sweetener for for the share buybacks they're going to keep that um that has certainly meant that it's a more muted reaction I think if they hadn't done that or if there'd been any change to the buybacks that we would have seen a really big downside but the one thing it probably will do is that it won't narrow that valuation gap so there is a big valuation gap between BP and the other oil majors Shell for instance so we expect to see BP continue to underperform and these results won't won't change that reality for BP at the moment and for BP shareholders which is disappointing. Okay let's move on to the German economy now and it's fair to say it was a bit of a mixed bag of data out today it had a big rise in exports in March but an unexpected fall in industrial orders what does that actually mean for Europe's largest economy going forward? Well, I'm focusing more on the industrial orders, really, and that's because it really shows that the, the manufacturing sector is still doing very badly. It's been a weak spot in Germany's economy. Manufacturing is larger in Germany than it is in other um, major developed economies in Europe and the US. Um, so when it's doing badly, that doesn't mean that the economy is going to do well. Now, we, we, we do expect the economy to have jumped out of recession and it's looking that way. But the manufacturing sector is still very weak. So it's now for growth, it's reliant on the consumer and the German 
German consumer is known to be a little bit more muted than the consumer in the US, for sure. So it could mean that uh, growth will be restricted in Europe's largest economy going forward, which could see a bit of a reduction in growth expectations for the rest of this year. But it does give a little bit more impetus for the ECB to cut interest rates potentially as early as next month. Well, you sp talk about interest rate cuts there. And the markets on the whole today were in a positive frame of mind, I think, with investors thinking there's more chance of a rate cut this year from the Fed and that ECB rate cut that you talk about next month. Um, are they right to be so optimistic about rate cut expectations? Well, I really think it's what a difference a week makes, really, because it started with the less, than, less hawkish than expected Federal Reserve last week which was then given a lot of credence by that lower than expected non-farm payrolls report on Friday. So that was for April. Um, both of those things together mean, means that there's now near 50% chance of a rate cut in the US for September. Now, remember, it wasn't that long ago that potentially the market was thinking there won't be any rate cuts this year at all. So that's really put us on a different path for the Federal Reserve. But I still think that the market is very much focused on the ECB and the Bank of England potentially cutting interest rates in June with the Fed following in a few months um, time. So the Fed won't be the first to cut that the market certainly doesn't expect that right now. But what it does mean is that we're seeing this risk rally move, um, but risk sentiment really improve on the back of this as the market looks towards these, these rates cuts and, and there was a bit more it feels like there's more clarity about rate cuts that they will come for sure this year there was a bit a bit of concern not that long ago that actually the fed might have to hike because inflation was being so stubborn but that seems like it's ruled out now kathleen brooks from xtb many thanks for your thoughts and that's market insight don't forget you can watch more videos on reuters.com